We're about 40 miles south of Candlestick Point as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. The scene a short time ago, this crowd, they love their 49ers, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. And we're ready for football as the 49ers get set to do battle with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. Here's the Australian-born punter, Mitch Wisnowski, to get things going. And we are underway from Santa Clara. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. say that sort of opens the playbook now second and short what do you think early shot here I like where you're going obviously we've been together for a while because you know me I want to take that shot early and loosen things up and he'll be brought down right around the 37 four yards the pick up first down second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble isn't it open up the playbook go play action toss that bad boy deep but in this situation Go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. Bring it! Touchdown, Bring it. Falcons! Kyle Pitts, 55 yards. And the Falcons are on the board here first in the season opener. Excellent start there. First drive of the season, big-time success, putting it in the end zone. And remember, that was done without any real map of how to do it. In other words, the deeper you get into the season, you get game film to work off of, tendencies to work off of. The first drive of the season, things can be entirely different than what you've seen in the past. It's a really good job of execution by them. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. carry for Raheem Mostert and he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five that's a really nice tough run inside and they gained five yards on it and be frank about it most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that so when they do they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps they're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Lance a handoff here to Mostert. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Not a whole lot of room to maneuver there. And I think that's because everyone took care of their responsibilities, filled their gaps, held their place. No place for him to run. Yeah, look good. Everything got funneled to the nose tackle. They swallowed him up. Lance looking to throw on third and two. 
open. Man is IU complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 25 yards that time. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. The Lance going to throw. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. Completion was given up, and that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. From the gun, it's Lance. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Niners passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. This is shaping up to be a really nice looking drive to get the season underway here. And how long do you think that they actually have been plotting this drive? I'm talking about the coaching staff, right? They've been thinking about this for a while now, and I think they're executing it even better than what they expected. On first and 10, it's Mostert. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On second and seven, Lance. They'll find Ayuk open right side. Touchdown! And the 49ers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And they will tie our score here in this opening quarter of play. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And he can't field it cleanly. It's loose. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They were successful last time finding the end zone on their opening drive of the season. And they'll get another shot here with a first and 10. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get advantage out of it. And he can't escape the pressure. Ryan goes down. Javon Kinlaw forced his way through, drops him for a loss of 10 yards. Second and 20. Another try after the first down sack. Ryan, that's going to be caught by Pitts. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 43. These two teams all tied after one. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 43. Now Ryan. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? 
Throwing again on second and ten. Ryan, throw left side, complete to QT. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Play action. It's Ryan. Escaping the pressure right. Oh, he's got his tight end pitch complete. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Ryan on target to Pitts. First down, Falcons. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now they try the right side here. And he gets stopped up at the 31 after a gain of maybe a yard. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. They snap it at one. Now Ryan. Got this complete to the tight end pits. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. Yeah, that is incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. And this one is right down the middle. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled them up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. On the handoff, this is Mostert. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Oh, he'll look downfield for Kittle. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Well, when you've got a tight end who can run, you've got to give him a shot to unlock the defense. Want to see what they can get taking the big shot downfield. That one winds up incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. 
To throw, it's Lance. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. Oh, he takes it in, doesn't let it bounce. He takes it at the two. So a good punt there, but a very strong 14-yard return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. On second and ten, Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. From the shotgun, Ryan. Airing it out, looking for Ridley. And got his man complete. Touchdown, Falcons. Calvin Ridley, 83 yards. And the Falcons push further out in front. And there, Charles, he lined up out left, ran the post, caught it over the middle, and the rest, as they say, is history. And you have to love the scheme that they just showed there because if you're going to run a deep post, you ordinarily have to get a safety out of the middle of the field. And you do it one of two ways, either by running routes at him that carries him away from it, or you either freeze him in the middle with routes that run underneath so that he doesn't get depth. Then you throw it over the top, and boy, what a successful play that was. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Pulls it in at the 13. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. We remind you that coming up in two minutes, we'll again head down to visit with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando back for another year. He'll have scores from around the NFL here on this opening weekend. Meanwhile, Lance's throw pulled in by Kittle. Three yards the gain there, second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. Looking to throw again on second down. Lance, the same target, same result. It's Kittle. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 35. Lance finding Kittle, first down San Francisco. A first and 10 here. And you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. 
Here's Lance. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Again, they'll throw it with Lance. This one taken in by the former Baylor Bear, Jalen Hurd. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. From the 22, Lance. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as it will come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Now after the sack, Lance and the Niners staring up here at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. Well, so much for holding them to a field goal. The pressure they got home on the previous play didn't hear. And that bought their quarterback some time to find a receiver. And it sets up a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And Lance now to throw. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. George Kittle in the final seconds of the first half. And the Niners are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. Gold with the extra point, and the lead is down. Time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. This will be fielded inside the five. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And they'll have time for one play. It's two seconds on the clock. Flushed out right. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. From just inside the 20, a short kick. Lance now on first down. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Thank <laughs> you. 
Shotgun now for Lance. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Well, I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion. But this time, the defense was all over it, and they got there to break that one up. Here's second and ten. Working from the gun, Lance. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Lance looking to throw it. Flush to his right. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Excellent work there by Lance as he scrambles for the first down. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Now Lance. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Got that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. On second down, Mostert works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. I see an extra defensive back on the field. little surprise here on third and one. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. 41 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. They hand it off to Mostert, and he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Throwing now is Lance. That's caught by Debo Samuel. Touchdown. San Francisco. Debo Samuel there to make the grab. And once again, the 49ers are back out in front. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. 
And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. And they'll be working from behind now following the touchdown a moment ago on the opening drive of the half. I think the guys right now, but as they go out on offense, they're zeroing in on what... Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked up by Gary and Conlon. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. So that time the pressure got home just as he was releasing the football and caused the pick. And what it did was it disrupted that fragile balance of the mechanics of throwing the football. You know, from the footwork to being able to actually throw it downfield. If one piece of that puzzle gets disrupted, it affects the entire chance of success. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and ten, third quarter of the season opener. Once again, it's Mostert. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Here's Lance to throw it. Now Lance unable to escape, and down he goes. But that's Grady Jarrett who forced his way through to register the sack. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. Now with the play clock about to expire, we get a whistle and a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a good result there as that'll get out of bounds and pin them back at their 10-yard line. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Ryan. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back at the two. One thing that I liked about this guy during the draft process was his motor. Of course, I loved his skills, but he plays hard on every down. And that motor on full display there as he gets his first NFL sack. 
We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Falcons send out their punter. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. Big boot that time, 57 yards, the official distance. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. He's picked off just shy of midfield. That, Charles, the first interception he's thrown here in year number two. And I know it's just the first one, but didn't it feel like what we saw from him last year where he was plagued by this type of a play? And they thought that, you know, over the offseason, going into a second season, some of that would go away. Thus far, still looks a lot like his rookie year. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap. They'll try again here, first and goal after the false start. Now it's Ryan. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one close quickly, and he'll force the incompletion. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Now Ryan. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Eric Armstead, the defensive end, will get credited for the sack. Big play if you think about it right now in this season opener. It's third and goal. Ryan. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Ten yards gets him closer, but now it's fourth and goal. Taking the lead. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it. And this is indeed up to a three-point lead. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Yeah. 
The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Going for Hurd on the deep ball. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Darren Hall. And the Falcons are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Now it's Ryan. Right back to Pitts again. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Well, some good games around the league here early in week one, and this one shaping up to be as good as any of them as we come up on a first and ten. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game second and eight. To throw is Ryan. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. Touchdown! Matt Ryan connecting on his fourth touchdown pass of the ball game. And the Falcons will extend their lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Now this will be returned from deep in the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Now Lance unable to escape, and down he goes. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Operating from the gun, Lance. He's going to let it fly. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over.
All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And they'll go for it. Lance. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked up by A.J. Terrell. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Boy, so another interception, C.D., and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it or you start thinking about going to his backup. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Give him six on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. So that'll back him up five. A false start hurts him there a bit. Backs him up to second and nine. Throwing now is Ryan. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Here's Ryan. And oh no, it's incomplete. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on, but somehow took his eyes off of it, falls to the ground, and brings up fourth down. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And this is going to be no good. He missed it off to the left, and this score will stay right where it is. And that miss should just about right have finished to this one. Yeah, they needed two scores, and they needed that field goal there to be the first one and still give them an opportunity. But now, with the time left on the clock, I think this one's about finished. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Second and ten. again. Lance. Now Lance unable to escape and down he goes. Grady Jarrett in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say guys you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. Now after the sack, Lance and the Niners staring up here at a third and long. On third and long, it's Lance. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. 
picked up by Darren Hall. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. But with the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start, it's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along. If you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And with that, our journey begins, Charles. Week one in the books. Going to be a great season. Oh, man, so much to look forward to. Isn't it nice to get a really good game right out of the gate? Preseason behind us. All these games count now, don't they? Yeah, this is the exciting time with just one week gone and plenty of weeks to come. So for Atlanta, hey, you get a win, you get it on the road. You can't ask for much more than that to start the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Cleveland to take on the Browns. Meanwhile, for the 49ers, they go down to defeat here in the opener. And they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in New Orleans against the Saints. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.
we are set, ready to rock for this Madden Ultimate Team matchup. And these guys on your screen, ready to rock as well. Some of the stars of today's game. And speaking of the game, let's get right to it. Here's the punter, Sam Martin, now ready to get us started. And we are underway from Kansas City, taken at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. for about three yards, second down coming up. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second down, Blunt. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. kill and he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to get the third down conversion so opening drive third down they complete the slant to move the sticks and ordinarily it's a high percentage pass when you throw it and receivers like to run that route because it gets the ball in their hands pretty quickly just a couple of quick steps upfield break towards the middle the ball should be there and then they can get to do some work afterwards and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Allen. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked up by the Michigan man, Jabril Peppers. And the Chiefs are going to get possession here as they force the opening drive turnover. The Chiefs in good position to start out as they come up first and 10 at the 45. So after the INT, it's Rodgers. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Rodgers going to throw. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Rodgers to throw on third and one. Eluding the pressure right. And that is incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read. And by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Andy Reid, some say always unpredictable, and here he says, we're going for it on fourth down. Here's a run now with Kittle, and he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. 
First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Play action. Now it's Rodgers. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Less than a minute to go here in a scoreless first quarter to this point. They're going to run this with a tight end. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Working from the gun, Rodgers. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he will have a Chiefs first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. No score after one on EA Sports. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And in for the Chiefs touchdown. A 16-yard touchdown as his guys are on the board first here tonight. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Point after try forthcoming. kick is good to make it 7-0 KC. So after the touchdown, Martin now on to kick this one away. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I'm here with a little college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Still nine remaining on second down. Now blown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. That's complete to White. They find some open field here. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll run it here with Blunt. And the reinforcements. 
reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. To throw, it's Allen. And the pass is intercepted. He was looking for Ingram. Picked off by Jalen Ramsey. And the Chiefs are going to take possession here at their own six-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. Here's a diving catch right side. The Chiefs will use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Throwing now is Rodgers. And right side, Henry's got it. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That one covers 29 yards, first down. Yes, but maybe here, not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Out to the flat here for Johnson. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Rodgers to throw once more. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Throwing is Rodgers. And that is caught for the touchdown, Kansas City. A great play there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Chiefs go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. So time enough for a kickoff here. Five seconds remaining in this first half. This taken in at the goal line. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. shot before half for Allen looking for White on the deep ball and that will be incomplete would have been a big hitter if they had connected instead it's second down time for a break we've hit halftime two quarters down two still remain we step aside this is the NFL on EA Sports For the start of the third quarter, the Chiefs have the lead and set to receive the football. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them 
in the locker room at halftime. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Gets it to Hill. It's a jet sweep. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the jet sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house. So they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. To throw is Rodgers. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. They'll go for it. It's Rodgers. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 43. Now Rodgers. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Rodgers again now. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because it nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. To throw again on second down, Rodgers. Well, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Cam Chancellor. Able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. And here now the putter, Martin, booming this one away. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, okay, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. From the gun, it's Allen. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Here's Allen on first and ten. He's got his man. It's Wayne. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A couple of first downs right in succession. And this is an offense that can really use a good drive. And they're off to a fast start here. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game. But they're on the move. First and ten. And again, it's Allen. 
He'll rifle this one deep right side. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep ball with the clock running down. But to no avail as time will expire on this third quarter of play. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And going deep for Hill. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Tyreek Hill, 42 yards. And the Cowboys are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. Extra point good by Prater. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Tyreek Hill sent to return it. And he'll be out of bounds here, a yard shy of the 25 of the 24. KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, and by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, old momentum, He's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side. And all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them, because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Watch out for Hill on the return. Call it a 48-yard punt. Give them nine, though, on the return. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and ten. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And it feels like the momentum has shifted. They scored, then their defense forces that last punt. And now a chance to tie the game on this possession. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Allen. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Allen now looks to throw. He'll get this out wide here to Elliott. 
And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Hallett. He is going to find Hill here. And he is going to get the first down as he covers up after a pretty good shot there. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Throwing his Allen. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill. Complete. Touchdown, Cowboys. Tyreek Hill. His second touchdown of the night. And the Cowboys are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And, partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one. It's through the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle. Kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. To throw is Rodgers. And this if throw incomplete. Now the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Johnson was the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. Rodgers to throw. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. A couple of first downs on the drive already. As they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now Rodgers. He's going to wind up and air it out. And this one is incomplete. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to throw. Rodgers. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. And a diving effort, but only right at the line of scrimmage. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. And again, it's Rodgers. 
Flushed out right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left. And that is no good. No good. Wide to the left. And a costly win there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, sent this one off target. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. What I would do is either hand it off inside or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out. Because if I'm back there trying to throw and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. And that one bounces out of the back of the end zone, so we'll start the drive at the 25 on the touchback. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. And Henry gets the call there on first down as he pushes his way forward. A pickup of about five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Well, look at this, a tight end carry. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. On third down, it's Martin. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Running for it, here's Martin. And they are going to stop him on fourth and one as they'll wind up going backwards. He only needed a yard, but he couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And Dallas, they'll take over in terrific field position. down to the 35. It's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. They'll run on first down. One. Pretty nice, aggressive run there.
it's Madden Ultimate Team Solo Challenge. You know the drill. Let's get right down to it. team. down is Brady. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone, and there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. To throw once more on second and ten. Brady into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 36, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Offensively, a far from ideal start there with a pick on the opening drive. Yeah, not exactly what they were looking for. We know that. That's pretty obvious. The beauty, though, is it's happening early. If they don't panic, they don't compound this problem, they've got a long way to go and a chance to get back in it. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Seven yards there and a first down. Tough run, but not a huge gain. Dropped at the 25. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And now they'll throw with Allen. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I know coaches tell us all the time to have a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. It's caught. This is White. And he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. But I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking with those big behemoths starting to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Give him two yards. That sets him up first and goal. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. 
A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone, but that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing, and as a player, that means an awful lot. Trying to punch it in with Henry, and he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Derrick Henry from a yard away, bowling his way in, and the Cowboys have taken the early lead. Prater for the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This one fielded at the 5. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7-0 to score as they start first and 10. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Oh, it's complete. A diving grab there by Brown. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Shotgun now for Brady. He'll diving, and he's got it full extension. What a catch. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Brady now on first down. I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. To throw on second and ten. Brady. This is caught. It's Brown. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 21. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. And it's caught. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Antonio Brown from 21 yards away. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Complete at the one. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. Boy, I guess they're going to keep trying to put the pedal to the metal here. They're going to try an onside kick. And the Cowboys are able to recover. A second quarter onside kick there that failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approach in going after it. Also may signal that they feel like they have the superior team, that they could try these sorts of things, and it won't come back and hurt them later. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now a carry for Blunt. And some room to roam now. Touchdown, Cowboys! LeGarrette Blunt, 48 yards. And the Cowboys on just two plays have taken the lead. Well, what a first half he's had running the football. Another terrific run there, and this one finds the end zone. Well, we know he's a guy who's capable of coming up with big plays in the running game, and his offensive line knows it as well. That keeps them motivated, looking for those extra blocks to give him room to run downfield. Blunt will get the football, and he is into the end zone again. So get him some oxygen. He scores on the long run and then punches in the two-point conversion for good measure. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This will be fielded inside the five. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. 
They'll be looking for the tying score here, down 15-8 as they have it first and 10. He's going deep for Brown. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Antonio Brown. 77 yards. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. And now Coach Bruce Arians has made the call. His guys will go for two. The try for two is unsuccessful, and they will remain down by a point. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And a short kick taken at about the 16, but he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. 84 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Second down now. Blunt. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. You ain't gonna burn me. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first-half highlights and analysis from a back-and-forth first half that we've seen. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. Here's the battering Ram Blunt. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. So did you suspect the same thing that I did, that they were lining up just to draw them off sides here? 100%. Well, how about that? They were going for it the entire time. Never questioned in his mind about going ahead and getting it, despite rush coming, and he's taken down. A hole to dig out of here, second and 17. Another try after the first down sack. Allen, and he dumps it off to Blunt. And he'll get up near the 45. He'll spot it at the 44. Throwing is Allen on third. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. Allen will look to throw for it on fourth. And this is caught, but they say out of bounds. It would have been a first down, but he couldn't stay in. And as a result, they're going to have to give up the football. So, Charles, why in the world do you take that risk there? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense on the surface. But I've been around enough of these coaches and, and, and enough of these meetings along the way. Sometimes they're so confident in a play call 
that they don't care about the situation. They think that that play, at that time, they're going to run it and pick up whatever they need. So maybe that's what influenced him there. I'm guessing because I have no other explanation. Yeah, that's tough. On side of the field, that chunk of yardage to pick up. Head scratcher. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Brady now to throw. Oh, Gronkowski with a diving catch. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Brady to throw. Man open left side is Brown. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Brady to throw again. Going underneath to Blunt. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. To throw, it's Brady. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. On second and goal, Brady flushed to his right. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. And now third and goal following incompletions on first and second down. The final shot before half for Brady. He'll buy some time right. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. timeouts remember so this is going to have to be a delay and that'll set him back five time for one final play here in the half so they will go for it on fourth down a final shot before break Brady yeah, he's got it he's gonna be stopped shy of the end zone that's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Cowboys will get the football first here, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in quarter three. A very interesting call and one that backfires. I know they're losing, Charles, but boy, to start the second half with the onside kick, risky. Felt like a sense of urgency from their side, coupled with 
you and I both know the special teams coordinators. They sell their key plays each and every week to the head coach, don't they? And I guarantee he's been selling this one. We can get it, coach. We can get it. And that came together with that sense of urgency you talked about. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Here's Allen to throw it. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else for the football. I get it. That's a stud wide receiver. You want to try to get him the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. So they're going for it, and here's Allen. It's grabbed over the middle by White. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. On first down, one. And he's able to get this inside the ten now to the nine. 98 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Again, here's Blunt. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Well, Garrett Blunt, his second touchdown of the night. And the Cowboys, they push out in front further. Extra point good by Prater. And the lead is up to eight. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Brady now on first down. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line. It's a sack. That's sack by Khalil Mack. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. Throwing on second and long. Brady dancing to his left. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. On third and long, it's Brady. He's going to drop this down to McCaffrey. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Walk the ball of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? And no move to get the offense off the field. Despite failing once, they're going to go again here on fourth down. Play clocked out of three, and we're going to get a timeout here. 
It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Well, the offense failed earlier on the previous crack at this, but they're going again on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Brady. And this is caught. It's pulled in by Gronkowski. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Brady. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And going deep for Hill. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Throwing is Brady on third down. And going deep for Hill. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off at the 36. Man, I'm not going to tell him that you called him old in our pregame meeting, but this guy has been around a long time. If there's a trick in the book, he knows it. He probably even wrote a few chapters, and this is what he's always had, and that's a nose for the football. He's able to come away here with the interception. They'll run on first down. Blunt, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. One quarter remains here.